Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoulli with Israeli News Live. Uh, some very serious things going on there. By the way, Mike from around the world is stating, I believe, if I, from what I heard, anyway, I haven't listened to the video yet myself, that Jerusalem may fall very soon in the not-so-coming-distant future there. Uh, that could be the case, and I will tell you, though, if it's the case, it is part of the plan. It is part of the plot. Uh, because to me, in order to bring about a new world order, you have to be able to cause a destruction to Jerusalem. And I can see the only way that they're going to be able to justify the building of the third temple on the Temple Mount uh, is if they get into an all-out conflict and allow the Dome of the Rock to be destroyed in that particular case there. Uh, listen to what uh, Netanyahu says here in this video here. This was released by... Uh, 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 it's actually by Suppressed News, but uh, Daniel McAdams uh, is the one that shared this video with us. I want to make sure y'all all my audios are up as loud as they can be because it's kind of hard to hear this very well. Listen in to Netanyahu. When Secretary Blinken was recently here in Israel, we had a candid conversation. I said I deeply appreciated the support the U.S. has given Israel from the beginning of the war. But I also said something else. I said it's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunitions to Israel. Israel, America's closest ally, fighting for its life, fighting against Iran and our other common enemies. Secretary Blinken assured me that the administration is working day and night to remove these bottlenecks. I certainly hope that's the case. It should be the case. During World War II, Churchill told the United States, give us the tools, we'll do the job. And I say, Give us the tools and we'll finish the job a lot faster. Well, you heard for yourself what the prime minister had to say there. And to me, really and truly, all you're doing is giving him the weapons to genocide of the Arabs there in the land. It's, it's really, quite frankly, a disgrace, in my opinion, what is happening. And it's brought a tremendous shame on the Jewish people on a global scale. And by the way, not all Jewish people share in the sentiment of Netanyahu or his uh, right-wing coalition there. Even Benny Gantz is somewhat moving away. Seems almost like there's a divide in the government, which is somewhat believable because, as you know, uh, there is, there was already before October the 7th, there was a major divide in the government because of the uh, the push to bring about with uh, uh, Ben Gavir and Smotrich and Netanyahu and this right wing coalition to bring about judicial reform, basically trying to create a theocracy and not a democracy in the Middle East there. So my concern is that we're supporting this. And by the way, this here, this video that I was sent to me as well, is nothing unusual to hear on the streets of Jerusalem here. Uh, a Jew tells an American Christian, the Torah says the godly thing to do is to kill you. Hmm, that's fascinating, right? Uh, I could actually share some more things with you on that, but let's listen into what this actually uh, is stated here. You respect me. Doesn't have to respect you. Huh? Doesn't have to respect you. That is the right thing. Are you Jewish? Do you want to honor God? That is the godly thing to do. We respect one another. The godly thing to do is to kill you. The godly thing is to kill me. That's right. That's yes? what the Torah says. The Torah says to kill us. The Torah says that idol, uh, people who worship idols such as yourself, when there is a Sanhedrin, to kill us. Yes. Okay. That's what the Torah so says. So we know how the Jewish people feel about Christians, yes? That you Christians discriminate are, against Christians. Christians are idol worshippers. You discriminate the against Torah Christians. The Torah says that Christianity is idol worship. You respect me. So it wasn't the girls that said that, but a guy in the background there that claims that Christians are idol worshippers and they should be killed. And he said when the Sanhedrin is put in place, they'll actually do that. Now, that does go back to the idea of the fall of Jerusalem. Like I said, uh, uh, according to uh, Mike from around the world, from what I've been told now, I have not listened to this confirmed for myself, but Mike is saying that Jerusalem could, could fall in the coming days there. So we'll have to wait to see what happens there. Uh, I'm not really sure about that as of yet there. Uh, let's see, there's a couple of other things here. Uh, let me. Oh, that was one, I see it there. I'll come to that in just a second. Let me first uh, share this with you as well. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, just came out on a Twitter thread as well. 
that the Daily Mail just revealed a secret Democrat plot to replace Joe Biden before the election. Bill Clinton, President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer will topple the aging president. The Daily Mail has revealed <clears throat> if Joe loses in the first debate with Trump or if his polling numbers keep failing, it'll take <clears throat> a united front from the liberal ground days to make Joe throw in the towel. The only <clears throat> people who could force him out of the out would be Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer. The Democratic strategist told the Mail it would have to be the four of them collectively. Uh, uh, it goes on to say, strategies theorize that Democrats would have uh, to hold a public event to symbolically transfer power from Biden to uh, the new candidate, at which Biden, Obama, Clinton, and Schumer, and Pelosi would publicly introduce and endorse the anointed nominee. So I'm very curious to know who that anointed nominee is going to be, if in fact that actually takes place there. Uh, let me share with you also, this is from my good friend uh, uh, Charles on, uh, on Twitter there that shared this here. Israeli troops catapult fireball into Lebanon using weapon rarely used since the 16th century. Um, and it is a catapult. Let's take a look at this here. Hopefully the video will play Every here. once in a while, a snap comes along that changes everything. Well, Perfect. as the commercial plays there, let me quickly share here. CNN Israeli troops have used a medieval-style catapult to toss fireballs across the border into Lebanon as fighting ramps up between Israel, Israel and Iran. Toward Lebanon, using a type of catapult called a trebuchet, a weapon rarely used since the 16th century. The IDF told a CNN affiliate that the catapult was a local initiative and had not come into widespread use. There has been intense fighting between Israel and Hezbollah on the Lebanese border since October 7, 2023. CNN has reached out independently to the IDF for comment. That is fascinating there to see that they're using such a medieval weapon. And of course, the question would be is why? Why would Israel actually go to use something like this here? Let me just see if anything's in the article about this. Uh, the uh, rotating arm, okay, let's see. The Israeli Defense Force said the catapult was a local initiative and had not come into widespread use. Israeli public broadcaster at CNN affiliate can reported on Thursday. Can said that the uh, Truba shoot was probably used to burn shrubbery, making it easier for Israeli forces to identify militants attempting to reach the border. A video of the catapult in action was posted on social media on Wednesday. Uh, CNN could not verify when the footage was filmed, but uh, geolocated it at, to the Israeli-Lebanese border from what they're saying there, there. That's kind of interesting, though. And there again, you know, burning fields and stuff. Yeah, maybe that's what the reason is. And it doesn't appear to be as, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, uh, unfriendly type of, of fire there. So, but yeah, I would be curious no more. Uh, in closing on our news broadcast, I had to share this with you guys here. This is just really fascinating. And maybe I'll do this a little bit more often. I get a lot of these in my Twitter feed there uh, where animals... Uh, do some amazing things. And this here, uh, ra starts raining. This one bird will go up underneath the eave of the house. He's looking out there at his friend. His friend doesn't seem to follow suit. So he goes and helps his friend out. Look at this. It's really amazing to watch this happen here. He's looking. He sees his friend. Won't do it. So he jumps to the other side of the friend, gives him the nudge. Here, get out of the rain, dude. Get out of the rain. And then both of them get up underneath there. That's just amazing. Animals are absolutely amazing. And the more you take time to see those things, it is lovely. I do share a lot of that on our Twitter page there. So definitely check out our Twitter page. Uh, oh, that's a very sick thing, too. I saw that earlier. They're putting sex dolls in Chinese hotels. Can you believe it? Absolutely horrendous there. And I hate all these advertisements. Oh, and that's another one I was going to share with you guys as well. Black goo attaches, attacks a crab and, and devours it. Just unbelievable the things that are happening there. Let's see if I can get the X to go to our channel. Uh, here we are right there. Israeli News Live at Stephen Denun, which is the uh, name I use to write books in. It is a pen name, D-E-N-O-O-N. 
So anyway, hope you check it out. By the way, too, we uploaded a very interesting video over on Patreon. Uh, it's about planet X and aliens uh, inside the Earth and on the moon there. Uh, some interesting public information has come to light on that. So I shared some uh, knowledge between the two of those there over on our Patreon channel, which is patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. God bless.